I observe the world today, I find too many problems and not enough solutions, too much depression and not enough hope. And what I wanted to do with Solar Impulse is to bring solutions that are profitable, that give hope. Because we cannot have the world divided into the environmentalists who want to protect the environment but want to destroy industry and consumption, or the industry who is giving us all the salaries, the wages, the quality of life, mobility and comfort, but at the cost of the environment. Today, there is a solution to link the two. It's called clean technologies. Everything that allows not only to produce clean energy, but also to save energy by being more energy efficient. Products that are now a new market for the world. But if you make a press conference to explain that clean technologies can reconcile ecology and economy, you don't have anybody coming. So you need something spectacular. You need something that strikes the mind of the people and show them that you can do absolutely impossible things, incredible goals, with these technologies. And this is the vision I had when I initiated Solar Impulse. To have an airplane that flies not only around the world, but beyond. And when I say beyond, it's not to space, it's perpetual flight. The mythology of having an airplane that takes off and theoretically can fly forever. Charging batteries during daylight with solar cells in order to go through the night, reach the next sunrise, and continue. The first study was made at the EPFL, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. We have here the, the new president. And I tell you, without the EPFL, nobody would have believed in me. Because the challenge was on two levels. It took five minutes to know how much energy we needed to fly perpetually. It needed seven years to identify the technologies, to have partners allowing to develop these technologies, to install them in the plane, and to be able to fly. So the flight itself, you can see it behind me on the pictures. What is important is to know how you manage to accomplish with a private company which had no team, no technology, and no money, something that was considered to be completely impossible by the world of aviation. And there are a few rules for that. The first thing is when you have nothing, don't wait to have anything before starting. Start immediately. I remember at the end of the feasibility study at the EPFL, I said, we have to make a press conference. And the people around me said, Bertrand, don't you think it's a little bit too early? We have nothing. I said, if we don't make a press conference, we'll never have anything. We have to burn the bridges behind us in order to be obliged to continue. Because if you want to do something impossible and nobody knows it, you will give up. If everybody knows it, you will never dare to give up. The second thing is work with people who are different than you. This is why I created this partnership with André Borchberg. André is exactly the opposite. He's an engineer, a jet fighter pilot, and a startup constructor. I'm an explorer, a balloonist, and a psychiatrist. But when you are different, you enrich each other. And this is what we also need to learn in our world. You will never invent and create anything by working with people who think like you. Because in this case, it would be very friendly. You'll have no conflict, but you'll have no creativity. Now, the third rule, don't expect logical partners to come. That was my mistake in the beginning, trying to work with the aeronautical industry or work with big energy companies. It doesn't work like that. These people know that it's impossible because they have studied rules. They have a clear frame of what is possible and what is not possible. So you need to work with people who don't know that it's impossible. Otherwise, it never works. And we had our airplane built by a shipyard. People who knew how to use carbon fiber but had no idea how to make a plane. Our engineers had no idea how to use carbon fiber. But they calculated a crazy airplane that needed to be as light as a car with a wingspan bigger as a 747, a jumbo jet. And the structure had to be 10 times lighter proportionally to the best competition glider. 
So you understand why the specialists say it's impossible. But, you know, you have to remember something. It's not the people selling candles who invented the light bulb. It's not the automotive industry who invented the Tesla. It's somebody from the world of internet who had no idea how to make a car. And he put a screen and built a car around it. And now, as the chairman of General Motors said uh, th two years ago, Tesla is a threat for the automotive industry because it comes from the outside. And it's so interesting to see that if we want to innovate, it's not a question of having new ideas. It's a question of leaving old beliefs behind you. If you do that, you are free. You are free to invent. Because freedom is when you can think in every direction. Freedom is not when you can do everything. You can never do everything. But you can think in every direction. And this is how this airplane was built. And this is why partners joined us. Of course, we believed it would be a 30 million project over five years. It became a 170 million project over 13 years. It's a challenge to bring the people together, to bring the funding. And here also, the funding came from industries that were completely outside of the world I wanted to reach in the beginning. Companies that came from chemical industry, insurance, electric motors, uh, champagnes, Google, you know, people who are completely from other worlds. And they know that if we want to have a better situation, a better quality of life on Earth, we need to innovate. And much more than that, we have to implement the innovations that we have. Because innovation is a big paradox in our world. Very often you hear politicians who say, we need to innovate and we're going to put a lot of budget and a lot of money, investment for innovation. I'm sorry to say that, but it's only a way to push the problem further and say, we will invest in the future, but we do nothing today. Today we have solutions. And can you imagine if an airplane can fly day and night without fuel, if it could fly five days from Japan to Hawaii, three days across the Atlantic, if it could go around the world with no fuel. Of course, these technologies can be used in our daily life. The goal is to bring this experience, these technologies, this vision of the world to the highest possible number of people. Today, with the technologies that were used on Solar Impulse, we could divide by two the energy consumption of the world, and therefore, of course, the CO2 emissions, in a profitable way, without threatening comfort, lifestyle, mobility, and economy. This is the important message. Today, the goal is not to go back on the moon, because it has been done. The goal is for all of us to develop a better quality of life, to develop more pioneering spirit, and to be able to be the actors of our life rather than the victims. It's useless to wait for others to do what we would like to do. We have to do it ourselves. And the pioneer is not always the one who succeeds. The pioneer is the one who is not afraid to fail. The pioneer is the one who is honest enough with himself to observe what he has learned, to observe what he believes, to observe his convictions and his certitudes, and courageous enough to do the opposite. This is maybe the only sentence you have to remember from this speech, because I'm not here to teach you how to fly in a solar airplane. But I think in any moment of your life, if you need a better solution, if you're in a crisis, if you want to invent something different, observe what you have learned and do something else. And this is why education in our world should make pioneers more than people who just reproduce what they have learned. Robots, it's very good for the industry. It's not good for the brain. People should not be robots. People should be able to call their certitudes into question and to bring completely other ways of doing. Because instead of having just one direction of thinking, imagine the opposite. And in between, you have thousands of possibilities. And here, you can choose which one you want to take. So it's not a question anymore of choosing 
just one action in our world. It's about choosing among all the possibilities. This is how Solar Impulse was built. This is how Solar Impulse flew. This is how 150 people worked on the project. With maybe the last point I would like to make, it's the purpose. It would never have been such a success if the goal was to make a world record. The goal was clearly to be an ambassador of clean technologies. And I explained this to the team, and I believe about eight years ago, I had the first hint that we would succeed. It's when I was walking in the street in Zurich, and a pretty young lady started to scream at me. I said, what happened? She said, I recognize you. Because of you, I lost my boyfriend. I said, well, I'm sorry, what did I do? And she told me, my ex-boyfriend, he was one of the high important engineers in your team. And he was working all the time. And he was working day and night, and in the holidays. And we could never go to the movie. We could never go for dinner together. I said, yes, I'm sorry, but did you tell him that you wanted to see him more? And she said, yes, of course. And you know what he told me? He said, if you want to change the world, you have to make some sacrifice. This guy, as an engineer, was not calculating an airplane. He was not gluing carbon fiber together. He was not welding electric wires. No, in his mind, he was changing the world. And I believe this is the spirit we all have to put in our spirit and in our hearts, that in a way or another, we can change the world. And alone, it's not easy. You have to be in a team. The team can be a government, can be a company, can be a university, but you need the purpose. And the world can be better if we make it better, not if we wait others to bring the solutions. With Solar Impulse, we demonstrated a few solutions. There are a lot of others, but I hope everybody can share the same spirit of pioneering and exploration. Thank you very much and good luck.